Hello and welcome to our Monday, uh, Monday Thursday service. Whether you're here in the church or online, you are welcome to the Lord's table. Our service tonight is a time when we gather, as the disciples did, to share bread and wine and be in the Lord's presence. We come to hear if the night Jesus shared a meal with his closest friends, was ultimately betrayed and arrested. We journey together with Jesus to remember what led to his death. We come this dark night to eat and drink together and remember the gift Jesus has given us through his sacrifice, the sacrifice of one made for the many. Let's begin our worship by singing hymn 372, Lord Jesus as with shadows. We come together now in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we continue to travel through Holy Week, we gather together tonight as you and your disciples did to eat and drink, to share the bread and the wine, to simply sit and rest in your presence. We know the story we will hear tonight, but still we come to be just simply in your presence. Let us hear your words and take them to heart. Let us not see ourselves as individuals on a journey with you, but as disciples gathered to journey with you on this Holy Week journey, but also on the journey of life. Holy Week sees so much of life played out in just a few days. Times of celebration and contemplation. Despite your power, you humbled yourself enough to serve others rather than, rather than be served yourself. You humbled yourself enough to let those around you show their service of you through acts of kindness and generosity, but also humble acts of friendship and the sharing of meals. Help us to serve others 
but also help us to humble us so that we may too be served when we need it most. Let us share together our lives in acts of worship, in acts of kindness and friendship, and in the sharing of meals. Help us to reach out to one another in faith and love, so that we can truly be called servants in your name. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Amen. Our reading tonight comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 30. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was now the day before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those in the world who were his own, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the thought of betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered him, You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter declared, Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, Jesus answered, you will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, do not wash only my feet then. Wash my hands and my head too. Jesus said, those who have taken a bath are completely clean and do not have to wash themselves except for their feet. All of you are clean except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, all of you, except one, are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I have just done for you, he asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so, because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you so that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. No slaves are greater than their master and no messengers are greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. I am not talking about all of you. I know those I have chosen. But the scripture must come true that says, the man who shared my food turned against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. I am telling you the truth. Whoever receives anyone I send receives me also, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. After Jesus had said this, he was deeply troubled and declared openly, I am telling you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked at one another, completely puzzled about whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was sitting next to Jesus. Simon Peter motioned him and asked, and said, ask him, ask whom he is talking about. So that disciple moved closer to Jesus' side and asked, who is it, Lord? Jesus answered, I will dip some bread in the sauce and give it to him. He is the man. So he took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Hurry and do what you must. None of the others at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas was in charge of the money bag, 
some of the disciples thought that Jesus had told them to go and buy what they needed for the festival, or to give something to the poor. Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, then God will reveal the glory of the Son of Man in himself, and he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jewish authorities. You cannot go where I am going. And now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Where are you going, Lord? Simon Peter asked him. You cannot follow me now that I am going, answered Jesus. But later you will follow me. Lord, why can't I follow you now? asked Peter. I am ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Are you really ready to die for me? I am telling you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. Amen. And praise be to God for the reading of his holy word. We now sing hymn 375. This is the night.
drunk, Georgie. <laughs> right. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I was asked to preach for this uh, Monday Thursday service, it dawned on me that I had never looked up what the word Monday means. I bet you know that. I bet you know. Well, um, Monday, Thursday, what does it mean then? We all know what Thursday means. It's the day between Wednesday and Friday. And uh, I'm only joking. The word Thursday comes from the Norse for Thor's day. Thor, the god of thunder who wields the hammer. Maundy, I subconsciously assumed it was to do with Jesus' lonely agony in the Garden of Gethsemane when he knew what was to come. You know, like, it sounds a bit like mourning, you know, being in grief. So I just assumed it was that. But Maundy comes from an old French word, which in turn comes from the Latin mandatum. And that means command or order. So Maundy Thursday is so called because of the words spoken by Jesus to his disciples after he washed their feet at the Last Supper. A new commandment. That is the Maundy, the commandment. I give unto you this new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So you could call Maundy Thursday, New Commandment Thursday, or Mandate Thursday, or even Love Thursday. It's funny though how some Christians think that the only true Bible is the King James Version. You know, if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. But as we know, the, uh, the Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. So any English translation uh, has to be, to some extent, an interpretation. Some to a greater extent, others to a lesser, lesser extent. And we can see that, though, with the word love. In the great exposition on love from 1 Corinthians 13, where Paul says, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. It does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And then at the end he says, now these three remain, faith, hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. But if you read that in the King James translation of this passage, it doesn't use the word love. Instead, it uses the word charity. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not. It's not puffed up and so on. Until we get to charity never fails and now abideth. Faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So then we have charity and we have love, and both of these words are translations of the Greek word agape. <coughs> but today the word charity has lost its broader sense, its broader meaning, and it's really only associated with charities or charitable causes. So more modern translations use the word love. But of course the word love is not straightforward either. 
you know, I love my wife, I love my children, I love music, I love chocolate, I love chips. Who doesn't love chips? If you don't love chips, you should go to the doctors, there could be something wrong. So the word love has got this broad meaning now, and it sort of can lose its meaning as well. So, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, so you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Then Jesus illustrates this love for his disciples by washing their feet, and that is love in action, charity. It's love in thought, word and deed towards others. That is charity. Being charitable towards others by showing compassion, mercy, kindness, generosity, patience, grace and love. Jesus washing his disciples' feet displayed his tremendous humility by taking the role of a servant he set this incredible example of what it is to be Christ-like. And we see that this action is one of complete humility and humbleness. Because Jesus knew the disciples would abandon him that night. He knew that Peter would deny him not just once but three times. And he knew that Judas would betray him. And yet, he washed the feet of every disciple. And in order to do that, he had to kneel at their feet. He loved them to the end. Loved one another as I have loved you. The church, not just here in Scotland, but in many other places, it's going through times of upheaval as we know. And I think Maundy Thursday, uh, when Jesus gave his mandate to love one another, is extremely important at the moment, lest we turn on each other. There are those in the Christian faith who look at Maundy Thursday and they miss out the Maundy. And um, the, the mandate to love one another, and they see only Thursday, Thursday, and are out to wield the hammer of thunder. It's not easy to display the mandate of Maundy Thursday. Just the other day I was feeling worn out and tired and I got extremely irritable and impatient and I snapped at a brother in Christ, someone I am extremely fond of. I forgot the Maundy mandate to love and I took up Thor's hammer. You know, we won't get it right all the time, but if we are willing to wash our brother's feet by saying we're sorry and ask for forgiveness, then we can move back into Maundy Thursday as we obey the mandate of our Lord. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, yet Judas betrayed him and Peter denied knowing him. Not just once, but three times. On Easter Sunday, Judas was not there, but Peter was and he, was, he and Jesus were reconciled. He loved Peter to the end and then beyond the end into eternity. Was Jesus reconciled with Judas? I don't know. Let's hope he was. But in these troubled times, in the world and in the church, when things are going to get extremely difficult, in, in my opinion, things I think are going to get extremely difficult. And it's then we really need to remember this mandate of Jesus to love one another as he loves us otherwise 
Monday, Thursday just becomes Thursday, Thursday, and we end up wielding hammers of thunder instead of charitable love. It's not easy to love like Jesus, as I know myself. But that is the mandate of Jesus. And without that, the church would either disappear or it would move into something else that it was never meant to be. It's not easy to love like Jesus. But the more we respond to his love for us, then that love of his will grow within us. And with his love, inside us obeying his commandment becomes possible a new commandment i give to you that you love one another even as i have loved you that you also love one another by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another like the disciples we too will stumble and fall even so, he loves us to the end. Amen. on at once without the world coming to an end. Well, it's fine. We're going to sing together our communion <laughs> hymn. And of course, I have my iPad has switched itself off, so I've forgotten which one it is. 376, hymn 376, Twas On That Night. <clears throat>
to celebrate our coming together tonight, three congregations into one. Even though there may not be very many of us, when it comes to the part of sharing the bread and the wine, we'll bring the bread out first, obviously, though I sometimes get that upside down. So I'll we'll have the bread first and we'll wait till everybody's got their piece of bread. Then we'll eat together along with the people who might be watching online and then we'll do the same with the wine so that everyone eats and drinks at the same time. Mm. Hope that's all right with everybody. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus said many things to his disciples. None of them could follow where he was going for the sake of all of us. He took the way to Gethsemane and to Calvary beyond it. He left the garden for the torture of the cross. On that night, he gave the disciples a new way to live, saying, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. On that same evening he had washed the disciples' feet and fed them. The broken bread of his body washed down with the wine of his blood shed. He gave everything that he could on his way to the final sacrifice of his life. The disciples all heard the words, but they did not understand. They thought this was the talk after the Passover meal. They thought this was the beginning of a new journey. They had yet to learn that loving one another might lead to death and beyond. On that night, the disciples were disturbed. Judas left to do his deed of betrayal. Peter was examining his heart for signs of the cowardice, which could be the only thing that would divide him from Jesus. We come to this table tonight, knowing the whole story, seeing the significance of that last supper for the disciples, that supper which has become our first supper of faith. We come aware that each of us have betrayed Christ in our own ways, both obvious and secret, knowing that we do not deserve the great mercy of unconditional love which flows from the cross and washed away all our sin. And God loves us anyway. We bring our faults and our failings to nail to the cross with our Lord, knowing that his forgiveness is our passport into the life of faith. At this table we face ourselves and each other and we keep that new commandment to love one another in the name of Christ our Lord. Steve has brought a song to share with us tonight. I'll just, can I just explain? Yes, of course yeah. you can. Um, this is something that came to me a few years ago. I have done it at, at I talked to last on Good Friday. And it's just based on uh, Jesus when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And um, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Lab Sabbathani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And often people try and explain that. Oh, he's quoting uh, the psalm or... God had turned away from him as the, he took upon himself the sin of the world. But this night when I, I was just playing what came to mind and I didn't really want to try and explain it, why Jesus said that, but to try and just feel it. So if you can bear with me, then I'll, I'll play it for you. You are free to join in if you like. My God, my God, my God, why have you 
forsaken me. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Holy Lord Christ, on this night of betrayal, we bring you our commitment, weak though it may be. We bring you our love, compromised though it may be. We bring you our lives, complicated beyond belief though they may be, and sit around your table, to hear your words, to take from your hands the offering of love and forgiveness. We do not come lightly, but with the trepidation of those who have failed you already. And yet you welcome us, you forgive us, you restore us, as you did for your poor, misunderstanding disciples who blundered through that Passover evening without a clue about what was really happening. We confess in silence now all the little betrayals that have crept into our hearts and minds and shown themselves in harsh words and wrong deeds. Lord, forgive us. And help us to move beyond what has been into what can be in the gift of faith. At this, your table, we lift up our hearts 
as it is right to do. We offer to you thanksgiving and praise. In the evening shadows, your light drives back all that we fear and shows us the way forward. And so we sing your praises in the words the angels used. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Creator of the universe, lighter of stars, force of gravity holding together your purpose, we thank you for the decisions that Jesus took on our behalf, for the great sacrifice which broke his heart as the disciples failed to understand and fell asleep in Gethsemane while he sweated blood. We honour him and try to live his commandment in faith. Almighty God, send down your Holy Spirit, we pray, to bless this bread and this wine which we set apart for this holy purpose. May it be for us a sharing in the body and the blood of our Lord who died for us to make all things new. This we ask in your holy name as we say together the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and after he had given thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat it. This is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. O oh, taste and see that God is good. Blessed are those who trust in him.
Let us eat and drink and remember our Lord. For every time we eat and drink this cup, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he returns. Shall we eat the bread together? Shall we drink the wine together? peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. May you turn to your neighbours and wish them the peace of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, weaver of space and time, you bring us close to the beginning of faith, then send us out like ships into infinity to take the message of your love out into the world. May we live that message in the love we share with one another. May we glow with that love as we go from your table, but never from your presence, which surrounds and upholds us through our own Gethsemanes. We follow our Lord on through all that must come before the sun rises on the new world of Easter. May we be faithful and attentive to all that he has taught us, aware of your touch upon our lives, responsive to your direction. And as we think of that night in Gethsemane, we remember all the places which are fraught with danger and full of betrayal, where violence stalks in the shadows and out in the daylight. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Rapha, for the tortured and torn Gaza Strip, for the battered land of Ukraine and the troubled streets of Haiti, for the dangerous areas of Nigeria and wherever there is hatred and fear across the earth. May there be forgiveness. May there be light. May there be understanding. May there be hope and may there be peace in the name of the Prince of Peace. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Come to our final hymn and just before we sing it can I say thank you to Morag for playing for us tonight it's lovely to have you back behind the organ there Morag and thank you to you all for coming out to share this service tonight and for Alicia and Alistair for doing the AV and for the hands who have been preparing tea in the kitchen which would be Isabel and Aileen I think and maybe who else it was all Isabel. Well, thank you very much. We'll all enjoy some tea afterwards. Let's sing our closing praise. Hymn number 371. Lay down your head, Lord Jesus Christ.
this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 